Cool. Yeah. Cool. Oh, we don't have to get up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're here. No, okay, the video the can start yeah. this way. <laughs> okay, okay. Wow, totally forgot that we have to... We're, like, ready to go home and get some sleep. <laughs> Even and... though I literally just did the plug for it and everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think, like, I just... Watching this movie may, makes me feel like a kid. Yeah, <laughs> and it feels like... It feels like a kid made it, like a like in a, in the best way possible. Like like describing the scene, where it's like, and then he does a backflip, and the camera follows doing this. And now you know the army's all there with their skeletons, right? And then what happens? Ash comes in with this really cool car. Yeah, and they're pinning Ash down and pulling his nose and, and fucking slapping him in the face. Yeah, and the villain is actually this deformed, evil version of Ash. Exactly. Like, yeah, but it's that mixed with. A very talented filmmaker. With real craftsmanship. and Exactly. With your lead being someone that, and I hate to keep repeating this, it's someone that fully commits to the bit. Yeah. Like Bruce Campbell knows exactly what kind of movie he's in and he's pitch perfect. Yeah, he gives it his all. and I just like the fact that, you know, in this movie it's no longer, because the first two Evil Dead movies and Evil Dead 2 is kind of a reboot of the first one. Yeah. The first two Evil Dead movies he's figuring out like what's going on. And I kind of like this one where he knows what's going on and now has to have fit in a different role, which is he has to be a leader. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's a cool way to complete his transformation or his arc, essentially. Yeah, it ends with him being like, accepting, like, I'm the king. I yeah. got this. <laughs> like, he fully accepts who he is. Have you seen the Evil Dead show? What's it called? Ash vs. Evil it's Dead. It's called Ash vs. Evil Dead. Have I seen? haven't. So the only Evil Dead properties I've seen is Evil Dead 1, Evil Dead 2. Mm-hmm. And so I haven't seen Army of Darkness. Uh, this until, until now, now yeah. and Ash vs. Evil Dead I haven't I'm assuming Ash vs. Evil Dead I picks, remember it got great reviews yeah and I'm assuming it picks up like in the supermarket or something like I that I want to say I've seen like a screenshot of him wearing like his supermarket outfit you know so it makes sense yeah. um, and but I think he helps out like another generation of college kids or some shit like that I really want to check it out after this yeah 100% I think yeah I just love that this is the f- first like Evil Dead movie where he wins at the end? Yeah, he gets, you know, it's like a perfectly fitting ending for Ash. Because it's not like he gets a perfectly peaceful life. Like, like the Deadites don't give him a break. But he, and it's because of his own fuck-up he doesn't get a break. Because he, <laughs> he still didn't say the words properly? Yeah, exactly. But he still comes out victorious because he knows how to handle them now. And he accepts his fate. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. Is that now he's like, alright, well... I've beat them before, so let's go. You know, yeah. hail to the king, baby. That's basically what it is. Exactly. Uh, uh, by the way, I think we should mention. So when we were doing Evil Dead Two, uh, when we, you know how we put, like, you guys know, obviously, like every time we're about to upload a video, at least two days before, we put up a community post teasing what video is going to be in that pixelated photo. Mm-hmm. And back last year, when we were teasing that we were doing Evil Dead Two in that community post. Everyone in that community post put Hail to the King Baby. And I... Oh, that's... I forgot about that. Yeah. And I think people might have forgotten that that's not an Evil Dead 2. It's not Darkness. Because you know how not. sometimes in a series where you'll, like, remember a quote, but you'll kind of, like, misplace what movie it's from? Mm-hmm. I felt like everyone quoted it forgetting that it might not be from Evil Dead 2. Yeah, it's kind of like people saying, Luke, I am your father for something in A New Hope. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And... And it and I just assumed I'm like oh that's probably Army of Darkness and okay, because yeah. Evil Dead Two I had seen I before. totally forgot about that funny enough and I make the community posts and stuff and I forgot about that um and so when this when that when he says that at the end I was still like I had forgotten about that line completely but right when he said it, I'm like oh I remember our like commenters talked about yeah. that you know <laughs> that's cool. My first exposure to Bruce Campbell, I'm sure it was yours as well, is in the Spider-Man. first Spider-Man movie when he was a wrestling, or, or the, yeah, the wrestling announcer guy. Yeah, I saw the Spider-Man movies before I saw Evil Dead. I didn't know it was Bruce Campbell until years later, obviously. But I do, my real bond, you know, my, my parasocial bond with Bruce Campbell came when I played the Spider-Man video game. Oh! When he's the narrator through the... Through the tutorials? Well, you and I both connect on this because, like, yeah. there's that uh, training program where it's in this black void of Spider-Man training. And it'll be, like, Bruce Campbell kind of being sly and telling him how to do things. But then also, there'll be certain, like, training modules where you can tell, like, he's eating a sandwich so his mouth is full. Yeah, yeah. Like, well, and he, he sounds so, like, like annoyed to have to, to, like, teach you how to play the game. Like, you'll be swinging and he'll be like, uh, hey, king of the world, um, just know you can stop swinging by pushing the X button. <laughs> yeah, like it's so cool. Because the original Spider-Man games, you and I both have like a yeah. fondness for. 
I keep using the word fondness. Yeah, it's a good word, you know. Thank you. I always pick a word and end up using it. Um, <laughs> but I think those Spider-Man games are cool just because it is like, even though Sam Raimi might have not directly been involved, but it's using Tobey Maguire's voice and it just still feels so loyal to Sam Raimi. Yeah. And so it's very nice. Yeah, yeah it very exactly. Like you said, it feels loyal to Sam Raimi. And, and he comes back in the sequels too, like in the other, in the Spider-Man 2 game and the Spider-Man 3 game. Yeah, and even the PS4, PS5 games, you can tell like owe, uh, owe a lot of debt to Sam Raimi. Yeah. And what he did with Spider-Man. Um, but yeah, man, I mean, you and I were talking off camera and off mic about how much like we love the Sam Raimi flourishes and Multiverse of Madness. Obviously, I don't think that's a perfect movie, but all the parts where you can tell like he got to go off, kind of. Yeah, yeah. It was so much fun, and I just wish he did more. Yeah, I mean, what was the last one before that? Before uh, Multiverse of Madness, was it Drag Me to Hell? I think it was Drag Me to Hell. His... That's crazy. And I think he's tossed around different. Fe- uh, directing projects here and there he's produced a lot for sure he's his name's attached to a lot of horror movies and stuff I do think I think he directed the first episode of Ash vs. Evil Dead oh okay that's cool so that's cool yeah yeah Yeah, Evil Dead is definitely like not a franchise or a fan base that I grew up with Mm -hmm. but I watched like the first two Evil Dead movies in college Okay, and yeah. d- but they weren't like a huge rewatch for me. Funny enough. Okay. I've watched Evil Dead Two now a lot. Like I've seen that movie a lot. But yeah, I, I haven't rewatched it since we watched it for the channel a year ago. But you know what's interesting? No one talks about Army of Darkness. Yeah. Well, I know it wasn't as well received as as Evil Dead Two. People consider Evil Dead Two just the best out of the trilogy. It is. Yeah. I think so. Um, I still really enjoy this. It's still like worth watching. But absolutely. I. And but it's I would a blast. I would put this on as much as I would put on Evil Dead Two. Okay, yeah, yeah. Because, again, it's also like, I say this, it, it's like an 80-minute movie. Yeah, that's, I know, because we've been just, you know, peek behind the curtain, as you like to say. Yeah, we've that, been watching a lot of two-hour movies. Yeah, two-hour plus, yeah, like, I think it was like Gladiator, two and a half hours, Blade, one and two, or and two all, hours. And I know, I know, boo-hoo us, we get to watch great, great movies. But totally. But it, they were, like, in terms of shooting and in terms of editing, it just takes, like, an extra push of more work. And so it's nice. The point is, it's just nice to watch a, a shorter movie. Yeah, especially a movie as like thoroughly entertaining. There's not a single scene I was bored in. Yeah, I, I agree. I think Evil Dead Two is a better movie, but I think Army of Darkness. What I appreciate about it is that it does do different things. It's a yeah. Oh, it's completely different. It's in a different time period. It's none of um, you know. It's it, it doesn't have like that cabin fevery horror element to it. It's and, more of like a. It feels like an army movie. And it has just as many unique set pieces. Um, now, while like the final set piece is basically like a battle sequence, mm-hmm. there's still a lot of creative flourishes in the battle sequence. But even the tiny little ashes coming out of the reflections. Yeah. That whole sequence is when it felt like it pulled back to Evil Dead 2. And that was also a great example of like what you can do with a sequel, which is take a bit from the original, which is... We'll consider Evil Dead 2 of the original, which is the mirror bit, right? Ash coming out of the yep. uh, mirror and grabbing him, right? That was an iconic sequence. Okay, what can you do in a sequel to heighten it, but still feel like it's part of the Evil Dead world, you know? And that was a great way to, like, evolve the bit, kind of. Yeah, yeah, totally. The, these <laughs> these mini Ashes coming out and tying him down. <laughs> yeah, still messing with him, being little stinkers, like you said. It reminds me of, I mean, I know this is well before, but it reminded me of Night at the Museum. Oh, yeah, 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 100%. Um, and I, I do now wonder if, like, Night of the Museum took that Yeah, from... and Gulliver's Travels, too. That was, like, the other one. Oh, uh, 100%, yes. Didn't Jack Black do a Gulliver's Travels movie? I just remember imagery of Jack Black, like, being a giant per- person, a bunch of little people tied Oh, down. no way he did! Yeah. Oh, my God! What an interesting filmography that guy That has. movie doesn't exist in my head. I'm like, <laughs> I, never, I didn't even remember that. <laughs> this... For listeners who aren't familiar as much with us, I have a lot of strange pulls once in a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you do though. Like you really do. Like I don't. Your your bank of movie references, like I can never predict. <laughs> like throughout our regular podcast episodes too, you'll just be like, "That was a strange pull," but okay. I will say, yeah, for that reason, it, 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 along with many other reasons, you should check out our main podcast on this channel. Where we talk about movies that Chris and I have actually watched a lot, mm-hmm. or just have a personal relationship with, and we yeah. go on at length about them. Like we recently did uh, Hereditary, and mm-hmm. by the time this is out, we would have done Carrie. Yeah. So I would check that out, but 
that podcast is also along with us talking about the movie. We also hang out, and Chris just pulls shit like something about Mary out of nowhere. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. I don't I, think you've mentioned something about Mary. I don't know why I'm bringing that. From. I get what you're saying, though. Um, you know, I think you. We just talked about this off camera, but I'm just going to repeat it because it's kind of funny for the listeners. Is you and I are can be such polar opposites in terms of like what we want to watch or what we're in the mood for. I have this tendency of like when I'm by myself. Not with friends, but when I'm by myself and I want to put on a movie, I want to be smart. You know, I kind of want to want to put on a, like an original like piece and something that's been celebrated that I haven't seen. You know, yeah, to f- uh, fill up my cinephile film bank or whatever. And whenever I'm watching movies with you, you're always like, "Come on, let's just uh, let's watch Dickie Roberts. Let's watch The Hot Shake. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's put on the Joe Dirt sequel. Well, <laughs> I've not seen the Joe Dirt sequel. To be fair. That one I, that I, yeah. I well you, that, you well you like the original so much that you're not gonna watch yeah, the yeah, sequel. Yeah, I preserved the first Joe Dirt movie. <laughs> no, I'm just but, kidding. But yeah, you know you know what that is for me though. Uh-huh. Sorry, go on, go make your point first. Well, I was just gonna clarify that like I love good prestige movies, and I think my relationship with movies is just different sometimes. Where like I also value the types of thing where you just turn your brain off. It's kind of like to me, it's like when I get hungry, sometimes I just want fast food. Oh, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, you just want McDonald's sometimes. Yeah. I get it. Um, you know what that is for me? It's Happy Madison movies. Yeah, you have a, a strange weakness for Happy Madison movies. I have... An, uh, well, first of all, I have like a huge affection for Adam Sandler. Um, Fondness? Did you try to dodge that word? Yes. <laughs> I hate you. Um, no, but I have a huge fondness for Adam Sandler. And so... When it's non Adam Sandler Happy Madison movies, I kind of had trouble watching them. Like mm-hmm. I'm not gonna put on Zookeeper. Yeah. But, uh, but man, I'm not gonna lie, man. I was uh, watching Sandy Wexler, that Netflix Adam Sandler movie that has been much maligned. Yeah. I laughed a lot. <laughs> hey, you know. And I had a great time, but that's my version of just yeah. like. Uh, just no, when I laugh, it's not me like laughing in judgment. It's more of like. A, it's okay if you are too. I no, don't... but it's like a. I, who am I to talk? I put on you know dog shit movies all the time. Yeah, that's a good question to ask the audience if they. I mean, guilty pleasures is an obvious one, but what are some movies that you're just like? I guess it's guilty pleasures, huh? Yeah, it really is guilty pleasures. I was literally gonna say, what are some movies that you're ashamed of saying you like? But I'm like, it's literally guilty That's pleasures. Guilty pleasure, yeah. List off your guilty pleasures in the comments. Yeah. I'd also like to know, so I, I want recommendations. <laughs> yeah, but overall, though, Army of Darkness is a really fun movie. I really enjoyed it. Yeah, I know we've been yeah. going off on a lot of tangents, but um, yeah. this is what happens sometimes. Though we get a little loopy after we shoot because we have these hot lights on us. It feels like a hangover after. The yeah, reaction. our brains get a little bit fried after we do this, but totally. Um, but yeah, man. Again, like. It, I would put this movie on like I said as much as I would put on Evil Dead 2 yeah. um, and the thing I like about it is I'm getting different things out of both yeah and I overall like just I said this during the reaction but I miss like stop motion and like movies that look a little janky but it's it feels real you know what and I mean? you know what's you know why it like feels so great to watch those kind of things is because you know it was hard to make. Yeah, exactly. Like I'm just tired of like I this is kind this is related, but I was just ranting to you a little bit when the Willy Wonka trailer came out, mm-hmm. and this is such a small thing, but it re- for some reason it just bothered me. Yeah, that that Hugh Grant was like CGI'd into an Oompa Loompa when they couldn't just paint his face and scale him down. <laughs> yeah something it's so small but I'm like why do we need to CGI that why like why can't we just you know do it old school yeah there's something you know it, I, I always find that something that feels a little bit more janky but at least it's handmade stands the test of time way more than just CGI now I don't want to take anything away from actual visual effects artists 100% now, yeah, nine, yeah to be clear I, 95% I, of the time visual effects artists are working under a time crunch yeah. and those guys work harder than a lot of people absolutely yeah just to be clear and the, some amazing achievements can be done through CGI yeah there's and some you, incredible things yeah 100% yeah but um, but I know what you mean so, like uh, like I mentioned the reaction if you watch like Gladiator 2 is just yeah. like I'm the entire time I'm just saying like those are real extras real yeah. people in the background well, and like you know I was just watching Red Letter Media's review for um, Top Gun Maverick and they made the joke comparisons to um, Jurassic Park like the newest one I forget what it's Jurassic called Jurassic World or, yeah Jurassic World uh, D- Dominion is that what Dominion. it's called it's a very smart title yeah <laughs> But like how they were saying like how Jurassic World Dominion was like bragging about having some prosthetic 
you know, dinosaurs. Yeah, it had one set piece with a prosthetic yeah, head. Yeah, exactly. And I remember there Not was... a prosthetic, but it had a one set piece with an animatronic head. Animatronic head, that's a word. Um, but I remember they were joking about it. Then there's Top Gun Maverick, which, which doesn't have, like, an inkling. Of He's like, yeah, no, <laughs> we're, we're going to put IMAX cameras inside of a plane. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And not everything has to be that, you know, much spectacle and bombastic, of course. But I, like, you know, I, I, I wanted to... I want to feel the texture of the movie a little texture, bit. Texture, that's the word, yeah. And when it feels like... Yeah, I don't know. Like It feels like... If I saw Army of Darkness in theaters, I would have felt like, oh, there was a reason I came to the movies. Yeah. You know? It's what Tarantino talks about. It's just like, there are a lot of the movies nowadays I feel like I could just see at home. Like, why mm-hmm. am I coming... T- why am I paying $16 to get a, uh, get a seat, leave my home? You know? And I feel like... Movies don't give a lot of a lot of movies don't give people a reason to get out of their homes. That was like they feel like they can just watch on TV and get the same experience, and I feel like that's a big reason why something like Oppenheimer and Barbenheimer, mm-hmm. Oppenheimer and Barbenheimer, Oppenheimer and Barbenheimer, <laughs> something like Oppenheimer and Barbie. Aside from the phenomenon of the summer and the meme and also the reason why they did so well is like both those movies have real sets, yeah, like practical effects and also like you know just. Vision, a human vision behind it. Totally, and I like to think that it's going in the right direction now. You know, totally, it's like what Tarantino says, where the pendulum swings. Yes, I, yeah. I've always been a proponent of that too. That like just things ebb and flow. And when I've gotten cynical, you've mentioned that. Again yeah, like and again. things correct themselves. That's always how it goes. Totally, I think at the end, what it proved though, like, is that people still appreciate that. Like in Barbie, the thing that people were talking. A lot about besides the movie itself and Ken and all that stuff is people were t- like raving about. It. I was like, oh my god, those sets are real. Yeah, like yeah. when Margot Robbie is floating down, you can tell she's on wire work. Yeah, you know what I mean. Which is like, but again though, and like that says so much about where our bar is at. You know what I mean. But it also shows that people and people still, still like it. Yeah, people don't 100%. cringe at those kind of stuff. I feel like studios think it's like people want things to look as real as possible, yeah. and I'm like. No, people enjoy that kind of stuff. Yeah, and, like, that's the thing is, like, when you make it completely reliant on... It, it, it basically makes it sterile, you know? Yeah. It doesn't have any texture to it, like you said. It just feels very flat. A hundred, a hundred percent. I think that's... Sam Raimi's always done that. Yeah. Um, it's a reason why you and I go back to his stuff all the time, specifically the Spider-Man stuff, but even Evil Dead. Um, so bringing it all back, like, you know... I was going to say something really cheesy, like, hail to the king. But, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. No, no, go for it, man. No, no I don't want to now. Uh, you want me to say it? Go for it. Hail to the king, baby. You have a good Bruce Campbell. Thanks. That yeah. was pretty good. Appreciate All right. That. I'm not going to do it again. You want to wrap up? Yeah, let's do it. Well, thank you so much for watching the After the Reaction. Thank you so much for coming along to this channel. All the people that watched our Blues Brothers After the Reaction and gave those comments and gave us so much love, we really appreciate you. This channel is a new endeavor for us, and yeah. please check out our main podcast if you're interested in the movies we talk about. Yeah, if you and like hearing us talk in general, we'd appreciate it if you checked out. Hang out with us. As always, stay spooky, dudes. <laughs>